Hey everybody! Well, today I thought I would do a part two video of our little buddy here, Yanbo. Now, I call him Sparky because you can name him whatever you want, and so you'll be hearing me call him that. Now, um, I wanted to show you a game in the first video. I'll put a link in the description to my first video. I show you the unboxing of him and uh, the really nice way that he was packaged and kind of the setup and just kind of going over some general stuff in that first video. So in the first one, I did want to show you this game that involved these little cards right here. And this game is called Data Spirit. And I couldn't, uh, sprint, I mean, <laughs> I couldn't get the game to work. I tried about a dozen times to uh, have him engage in the game, and I finally got him to do it one time, but then I had him set up on the table, and it, he does tell you to make sure that he's in a wide open area, because you, you are gonna need a wide open area like this. Now what's odd is in the book here, they show you to arrange the cards in this fashion, but what doesn't make sense is they tell you to put the one behind the five, and he can't see the little QR codes that are on there, if you'll notice how it is. So I've moved, I kind of spread them out. So what this game is, I think it's a timed game where he'll tell you what number that he needs to look at, and then you use the little, uh, the little wrist controller right here to turn him left and right, and then you have him uh, aimed at the right number, and then from there you can, uh, you know, he'll, he'll say what the number is. Okay, he thinks that I'm saying something else here. All right, so let me get him set up, and then we'll try this game out. Okay, so now let's try this game again. So let's get them started. Sparky, scan the QR code. Start recognizing the QR code. It's data sprint. I can't wait to get started. Waiting for wristband connection. All right. The wristband is connected. Please place me in an open space and arrange the game cards according to the rules. Once ready, say start the game. Start the game. Okay, now see, this is the problem I was running into. I tell him to start and then he, he doesn't do it. Now let me see if it takes him a few minutes or at least like a minute or something. But he should start the game immediately, because that's, that's what he does with all the other ones. Sparky, start the game. You can see him tilt his head, so that indicates that he's trying to start it. All right, yeah, so see, I'm just not getting this game to, to click on like the other. So obviously this is a glitch that they need to fix. Sparky. Start the game. <laughs> All right, well, unfortunately this is a bust. I really wanted, wanted to show you this game, but it looks like uh, I'm not gonna be able to do it. All right, now I wanted to talk about this charger here because in the first video, I wasn't sure if he could go back on his own and recharge himself. Now, uh, X Origin did comment in my first video, and so while they were there, I asked them, you know, can he go back on his charger by himself? And they they said no, and so uh, but they didn't elaborate. They didn't say if he's going to be able to go back to his charger on his own later or from an, an update. I would assume that he can. I mean, that's a really big deal for, I think just about any of us who buy these robots want the, uh, the robot to have the ability to go recharge him or herself. I mean, uh, Emo can do it, Vector can do it, Luna can do it. And the way this thing is designed, you'll notice it has a slope on the front. So it looks like he's meant to roll up on it to charge himself. So, you know, I probably should have asked them, you know, do you have plans to have him uh, charge himself in the future? They didn't really clarify. But if, if he doesn't, if he doesn't have the chance to be able to do that, then that's kind of a big deal. You, we really need uh, him to be able to do that. So I'm, I'm really hoping that that is going to be something that he can do later on. Now let's talk about this wrist controller. So first of all, it's pretty obvious that this was designed for, uh, for kids because the strap is really super short. I mean, I can barely get this over my, <laughs> I can barely, you know, get this over my hand like that. And so, you know, I, they really should have made this long enough for adults to wear. I mean, we adults want to play with him too, so <laughs> I'm not really sure why they decided to go with this short of a, 
of a strap on here. Another thing is, when I got this, the strap actually went this way, not this way. And it was kind of backwards because it now, now if you wear it on your wrist, the way it was originally arranged, you can see his head right here. You would have had to wear it sideways. And now this would be forward, backward, left, right, which is really awkward. I think most people would want it this way, so it's right side up, and then that way it's forward, backward, left, right, like that. And so I'm looking at this band, I'm, th I'm thinking, gosh, you know, why did they make it that way? And then I, no I noticed this right here, I'm not sure you can see the detail, but there's a little uh, line right here. And see how it's open on this side and closed over here? Well, then it dawned on me that you can actually change this out. So see the little metal clasp that's right here? It's kind of like a watch band clasp. So what you do is you flip this up so it's vertical and then you slide it off where the open end of that is. And now you can go whichever way you want on this. So I was able to flip it around, but there was no mention of this in the instructions. So to put it back on, you have to, uh, well, let me get focus back on here again. It's always so hard to get this thing to focus, right? Okay, so now you make sure that the, the clasp is vertical like this. Then you line it up with that, that little trough, I guess you could call it. If I can get it in here just right. All right, there we go. And then when you slide it back on, focus, <laughs> and you'll hear it click like this. And then you flip it back down and that locks it in place. So that's how you adjust that. But there was no mention in the instructions about that, so that's something I kind of wish they would have done. It sounded like also they, I think I saw somewhere that this bezel is supposed to be a controlling thing, but I tried it out and, and it doesn't make them turn or anything, plus it's really hard to grip. But uh, so getting back to this, as much as I think this is kind of cool that it's more modern, it's probably got an accelerometer in it to make him uh, steer, it's really hard. And in the instance of this game, so uh, <laughs> he keeps hearing me say stuff. So in the instance of this game, when you are turning this thing side to side to make him read the, the QR codes, the problem is, is your tendency is also to make it lean forward or backward. And now he starts moving forward or backward. And then now the distance is kind of messed up as to where he was. So it's a, it's a little awkward to use this. I really think what they should have done, and I'm just going to use this one as an example, is they should have went with something like this. It's, it's your normal, it's like a, um, a joystick controller. And so, you know, your typical forward, backward, and then uh, left and right. They should have went with something like this because it's just a whole lot easier and it's more true uh, to, uh, you know, like be able to control them. And I'm not really sure how much you'd use the remote control for it anyway. But in the case of this game, it would make it a lot easier to do that. And then also, if you're playing that game, it's probably easier to have them on carpet because uh, that way when he stops, when he turns, it's he stops... He stops more, uh, you know, sudden, like, uh, like he, you know, it's just easier to control him than, say, on a hardwood floor or a hard surface. But, yeah, if they had gone with something like this, I think that would have been a lot better than this. I mean, yes, this is more modern, but it's just a little bit harder to control him rather than something like that. Another thing that I wish they would have implemented in him, and I don't know if that's something they're going to do in the future too, is whenever we have, some, we humans, you know, when we see something cute, whether it's a, a dog or a cat, some animal or a cute robot, the first thing we want to do is pet it. We just want to pet, you know, we want to pet the little, the little robot or pet. And with, uh, let's see, Vector and Luna and Emo and Ebby, you can pet all of them. Unfortunately, he doesn't, uh, you know, a Sparky here doesn't have that feature. When I try to pet him right here, you'll notice he's not really reacting to it. And now I don't know if there's a sensor under here that has a petting, you know, so a petting like detector so that we can know if he's going to be able to be pet in the future. But I really think that's uh, an opportunity lost right there. They really should have had him do that. And I would think that if he's going to have that feature, he would have had it right out of the box. So I'm guessing he's not going to have that feature. So I, I just thought that was really odd. That was something that I think they should have included on him. So in the video from X Origin, the, there was like an advertisement for for uh, Sparky here. And they were showing a scene where it's like a father, a mother, and their kids. And you can see uh, Sparky kind of roll into the room where the father is, and he's kind of like in a den or something, and he's kind of stressing over the, the family financials. 
And it gave the illusion or image that he's able to wander around the house on his own, like he just kind of came in there by himself. At this point, he does not have the ability to roam around the house by himself. You, you're going to have to tell him, you know, to move if you want to, or you're going to have to use this thing. So uh, I thought that was kind of odd. Another thing is um, in the scene where uh, they're in the kitchen and he's giving uh, some cooking tips to the mother. They have him sitting up on the counter, which I really don't recommend doing that because, you know, while he does sit here pretty good, if for whatever reason, maybe the kids activate this thing and he's on the counter or whatever, and he rolls off, you're gonna have a $900 robot fall off the counter onto the floor, and that is not a good thing. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. But I'm hoping that he'll be able to roam around the house a little bit maybe come greet you at the door when you come home i mean how cool would that be or just you know maybe ask him to come come to you uh i don't know if he'd be able to like say he's in another room and you want him to you know come come see you or you need to talk to him or something and he'll know to come work to where you are maybe he can kind of figure out where that is so I don't know, maybe this is asking a lot for this particular robot because I, I know that he's mostly designed for kids, which once again, I really wish more of these robot companies would design robots for adults too because uh, there are so many robots designed for kids, but we want, you know, as adults, we want robots too. I mean, <laughs> you know, okay, so he's going he's gonna to chill out here for a while because I haven't messed with him for a while. This is actually kind of cool because now you can see how he kind of... Oh, well, no, I guess he's back. He heard me talking. All right, well, never mind. I was going to try to show what he looks like when he kind of goes to sleep. But anyway, yeah, going back to this whole thing, I really wish that they would make more robots that, that have adult features and, a, and things that we adults can do. Also in that video, they show him playing chess with one of the kids, and it kind of makes it look like he can detect where the where the pieces are. I'm not really sure. I, for, for that to happen, he'd have to have a special chess board that, that allows him to know, to know where the chess pieces are. So I'm not really sure. I don't know. When they do these advertisements, I really wish that they wouldn't put things in there that the robot can't currently do. Um, and, you know, if, they're, if it's something they're planning on having the robot do, maybe they need to, uh, to mention that, you know, this is going to be an upcoming future feature or something like that. But if you watch that, uh, the ad, I think it's from X-Origin, or maybe it's like yonbo.ai or something like that, check out the video and you'll kind of see it. It's a, it's a fun little video, but uh, a lot of the features in there, they show he's not capable of doing it. Another thing I hope that they're going to change also is the fact that he has to use these QR codes to activate different things like stories or games, like the game that I showed you earlier. Uh, in order to activate those games, you have to have him scan the codes. For instance, I, I said his name and I said, let's play data Start recognizing the QR code. And I said, uh, let's play data sprint. But he, he said, well, that sounds like a fun game. Um, tell me the rules and stuff like that. So he, he won't Make activate sure the, the game. QR code. <laughs> buddy okay so then uh but <laughs> so you can't activate the game just by uh asking him to play it and that's another problem too because what if you lose this book now you don't have the qr codes to to play the games or tell the story so what i would suggest is if you get if you get him uh, maybe take some pictures of the QR code and, and also with it, what it is and put it on your tablet or your cell phone. And then if you ever lose this, you can have him scan the code directly from your phone or, you know, or whatever device you're using. But I do hope they get away from the QR code thing. All right, well, this is just a short video to kind of maybe recap some stuff that I couldn't get to in the first video. Obviously, this little guy has got a long way to go. He's going to have to have some updates or some things that are going to need some polishing, uh, maybe a few glitches. He, he needs to be able to access this game. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but you know that you have to be patient. Whenever these robots first come out, they are, you know, they're, they're very basic. They just have to put the basic stuff out there. I kind of wish maybe they might have waited a little bit longer to uh, release him to have a little more stuff to play with and a, more, a little more things to do. Primarily right now, he's kind of like a chat GPT robot. And I think that's kind of the main feature of him right now. But I'm hoping that we'll have more games, maybe some more games that, you know, like an adult can play or solitaire or something. Maybe he can actually show the cards on a screen or something like that. I don't know. There's all the possibilities are endless. But uh, hopefully they'll be able to kind of fix some of the stuff that's on him, get away from those QR codes, um, may maybe get a better controller. Or I'm not even sure you're really going to use it this much, but, uh, you know, this thing. 
and I don't know, just some different things that I've kind of mentioned here. But like I said, this is the beginning, and I hope that they'll just make them better as time goes on. Just like uh, Emo and Ebby and, and Vector, they all kind of started rough, and then they got better as time went on. And so we're just going to have to give this guy some time. All right, well, anyway, <laughs> that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'd very much appreciate it. And until the next time, I'll see you on the next video. So thanks again for watching, and have a good one.